everybody. It's Jamie Lyerly. This is our Turned On Tarot reading for the week. Um, and we're just going to wait and see who pops into the room here. I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit. So just take a minute. So today, um, I got the hit that we're going to talk about business. So let's see if anyone wants to come play. And we will. So yeah, if you're here um, or whoever's here, go ahead and you know type in the chat box so I can know that you're here and we'll get started in just a minute. with all this stuff. Okay. So yeah, if anyone, uh, when people are here, go ahead and just pop into the chat box so that I know that you're here and we'll just get started. Okay, yay, we've got Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Welcome. these little pieces and parts in the morning. I should start doing my webinars at noon so that I can actually be awake more than <laughs> at 10 a.m. So I, I'm just learning. I love having things at 10 a.m. so we can get started for the day. Um, and I also know that um, I don't look quite as awake as I as I would at noonish. So I'm a bit of a night owl myself here. So, okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started and I'll tell everybody what's going to happen today, um, which is um, so today that we're going to, I got the, the message yesterday, um, like that we needed to talk about business and how to do readings for, for your own business or for, um, you know, to be able to bring clarity in there. Cause I know I have a lot of people, um, you know, I have a lot of people in my life who are entrepreneurs like myself and, you know, we have like attracts like and um, I used to have in general when I used to do readings, I'd have nothing but people wanting to ask about relationships, which is not surprising. I'm a you know a relationship coach myself, and I you know and I love love. So it's uh it's one of those things that there's you know I'm in a new phase of my life here where I seem to have more entrepreneurs around than anything else, and so you know entrepreneurs like to talk about business. I love talking about business, and so um, so why not use business and tarot together and talk about something that we're really passionate and inspired about. So that's what we're going to do today. And so we're going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how to use tarot uh, for, you know, to help you advance in your business and also how to help, you know, to help you have more clarity so you know exactly where you want to go. Um, and clarity doesn't, you know, doesn't always come when you know we have so many opportunities coming up for you and these little things opportunities possibilities everything around there that that um you know as an entrepreneur like especially the bigger you get the more you start to see things and go oh my gosh it, you know should i do that like should i take my time and my energy and go there and so tarot is one of those things that like if you can you know i'll tell you the three steps on here about you know what i see that you need to be able to do your own readings um you know and uh but if you can tap into that and then you and have it where, you know, you can kind of be your own oracle, um, then you won't have to wait and to see if you can find someone to read for you, um, which I'm all about empower, empowering people to be able to do it themselves and knowing that sometimes it's best if you have someone else read for you. So, OK. Oh, Jenny says I look beautiful. Thank you, Jenny. See, I, I'll take all the pets in the morning. Pet the kitty. I'm just a big kitty. So, you know, it's all like I work well for, uh, you know, people petting me in all ways. So thank you. I accept your compliment. So, OK, so we're going to dive right in. Let me just tell you, um, I'll tell you the kind of the shape of the show here, which is that we'll do. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and um, and you know, a little bit about me. And then I will, uh, I'll do my little small lecture about how to read to row for yourself. And then um, I'll make, um, I'll do some readings for, for other people. 
um, and then I'll make an offer and then we'll close it and if there's any other last questions. So um, it'll run about an hour or so depending on how many people come in and have questions and we'll end early if there's not you know that many questions. Or people can continue until to ask me all kinds of questions and we'll just dive in deep with whatever we have here. Okay? All right, so first about me. I've been reading to Rose since I was 16. And like I said, with the I love love, I when I first got my set of um, to row cards, I became basically the official reader for my friends about does this boy like me or does this girl like me? And so I was basically like a love to row reader. You know, I focused on relationship. I focused on um, on on being able to um, decide, you know, really that kind of energy between two people, you know, because connection is one of the most important things to me in general. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of a like I've I love connection because I know what disconnection is about. So I think about for Tarot, um, you know, is, is available there to be able to, to see the energies between two things. Um, and so when I started off doing readings for, you know, as relationship readings and kind of those whole, you know, what would happen if I asked this girl out, you know, or what, you know, because I had a guy friend that every week, every, actually it was, you know, every couple times a week, he would be like, hey, I've got this new girl. Can you read some Tarot? And so I got a lot of, um, practice in the beginning when I was very young on how to read for other people and how to read the energies and make it where um, and understand, you know, that people are really invested in like when they like someone, you know, and they have that investment of like, I really like this person, but should I ask them out? And so um, I learned how to detach fairly quickly from the actual you know, from what the situation is and know the fact that I can read to row and have it um, not affect, I don't say not affect me, but it, like having it where um, I can be a, de a detached party, you know, even though, and I tell exactly what the, t the cards say. So that was some, some of the training I had when I was younger, and it's actually applicable now with the fact that um, I can't read for someone if I'm super invested in what it's actually going to say. So so knowing that, so that's a little bit about me, and I'll, you know, go into my, my lecture there, and um, yeah, this is it, so Rose's been coming up um coming back into my life um you know most recently within the last like three years and just in the last six months or so i've decided to do these turn on tarot readings so that i can start um so i can start actually let me close this i realize my things were up okay um so yeah i started doing these turn on tarot readings because i realized that i actually wanted to start reading for people again um because i i love being able to do that so that's a little bit about me and I'm just going to go right in. If you guys have, um, I see Ashley there. Hi, Ashley. And so if, um, you know, Ashley and Jenny or anyone that pops on, if you guys have any questions, um, not just like the personal readings, but if you have any questions along the way while I give this lecture, um, you know, then uh, put, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat. Because to me, you know, the reason I'm doing this kind of lecture about you know, how to read for your business is that I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs who want to be able to have insight you know, in their business. So I want to offer that there. Okay, so I'm just going to take a sip of tea and then we'll go into the, the, the quickie lecture part here. Yes, in my, uh, I, I always think the irony of drinking out of this cup here. This is from my mortar board uh, for scholarship, leadership, and service for being the top 1% of my university. So um, it's it's very ironic the fact that I have this like this intellectual like achievement mug that I drink every time that I drink out of with my like psychic woo woo, you know, <laughs> like everything that I do um, is so uh, is so outside of the intellect and yet um, and yet the exciting thing about it is that like the intellect is what is can be limiting, but it's also what makes me curious about doing these readings. I'm super curious and I'm willing to study the thing that I'm interested in because my intellect is not, um, you know, can be my downfall too. It's like I'm super smart and sometimes that stops me from, um, from actually, you know, just following the energy because I overthink it. And so that brain sometimes can actually be the thing that stops you from actually moving forward with things in life. Is that like your brain is and goes super fast. 
And so, um, and so, so I always think the irony of drinking out of my, of my, my very smart person cup is I'm like, okay, don't even use your mind anymore. Here, use this other tool. <laughs> so, awesome. Um, Jenny's talking about the. I'm curious about tarot decks. So I'm curious what you know. You have your question here about tarot decks. Um, I personally use just the traditional Rider White. Um, Tarot, and the reason why I do that is actually my teacher Beatrix was the one that has taught me and brought me back to Tarot. Um, and the idea behind uh, using the Rider White or the Rider White um, Tarot is that uh, their, you know, their traditional symbology. The reason I use it for my readings is that this is it's traditional symbology, and um, and I'm all about empowering other people to be able to do that. So when I do a reading for someone, um, I like to make sure I use the traditional deck um, so that um, so that if they're interested in um, in looking up the information for themselves, they can go do it themselves. It's not all on me. Like if I use some esoteric deck when I'm reading for other people, then it be and then it becomes like Jamie as the channel and her magical deck will teach you something um, versus, you know, I am the channel and I do have a magical deck, but it's not, it's less about the actual cards and more um, about what I see in them. And so I actually, for reason I use the traditional ones is so, uh, is so that people can feel empowered to look it up for themselves. And it's also because it's traditional um, symbology. Like when I talk about the fool, you, you know, a lot of people have an idea of what that actually is about. Um, so I can also find though for traditional, the traditional deck, it has some, you know, pretty scary cards and I just pulled a card, I pulled judgment reversed. And so, um, that actually really does talk about, you know, like when you look at this, it's like, I mean, it's some traditional, almost like church, like in, you know, we've got people being resurrected from the dead and angels and, you know, and all these things in there that, um, that if you have a background in like, you know, religion, not being, um, not being a happy thing for you. Sometimes these tarot decks of this traditional deck were actually trigger stuff, you know. And so um, choose another thing. Uh, I want to say another, you know, when it comes to like doing oracle readings, there's tons of oracle cards out there, including, um, you know, the Doreen Virtue cards and other things like that that um, that you know people use uh, to be able to do to be able to pull that out, you know. So it's like I'm. So it's really just whatever deck calls to you. Um, I like, like I said, I like to use the traditional and the way that my teacher talked about how, talked about it was basically like you learn how to read using the traditional cards um, is like the basic one. And then you step up, you know, feel like you can move to the next level once you can get the cards down like that. So um, and I want to see here pretty modern, modern ones. And I heard about better to learn more spiritual pure than using traditional. That's, you know, like I said, it's a you know, it's a, that's other people's opinions um, about you know, having whether or not it's more spiritual pure than the than there. So it's like, to me, the idea is that the cards are gonna are gonna show you something. And if you're not turned on or have anything about the traditional deck, don't use that one. Find one that you get really light, lit up about. Um, and so um, the decks that I've seen before, I know that there's like there's one that's called like the witch's deck or some other decks for in the beginning when I first got into tarot, I used to try all these different decks out. And then I found myself again coming back, especially when I'm reading for other people, I keep coming back to the traditional one um, because I want to empower them to do that. And yeah, I'm also having the fact that they might not have that. You know, it's like for me, I just you know, I still remember the last time I was doing a reading for someone, um, I get information immediately when I call someone in. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to draw a card. I'm like, I'm supposed to put up the pretense that I'm actually reading tarot rather than just reading their energy. <laughs> but it's like, just to, to give you the secret behind it is the fact that you don't actually need the cards to read people's energy. I just need their permission. Um, but the cards actually give me something to point to and talk about. Um, and so, so that's, and again, like it comes back down to objectivity as how objective can you be about that? So, yeah. And Ashley said, I liked being able to look up the cards from, from the last reading. Excellent. That's, that's a way to go deeper with it because I have a certain answer for you um, and other people, um, you know, like if you can empower yourself to go deeper with it and find out what it really means for you. Um, the, like, like I said, the reason why I do use the traditional tarot is that like you can Google you know, the card that you have and just see what comes up for that. And then you just get what I call Google Mancy. It's like, you just follow the thread. 
like, oh, I like this piece, and I didn't like this piece, and oh, maybe it led to this, and then you just kind of use the Google to be able to to get there. So, um, and my my point of view is the fact that like I'm just looking for inspiration to to get to my own intuition, and so that's how I use the tarot decks. So. Okay, great question. I was gonna do something on that soon. And so I wanna, the quick lecture that I wanna do around using Tarot for your business, there, there's three parts here. But the first one is um, forming, you know, to be able to have for your business is that you want to, um, to be able to form the right questions. Um, and then there's no like right questions, you know, but the idea is that we, you form, well, actually, let me start back one more. So the first, well, you know, we're talking about forming the right questions here. Um, is that you want you want to see with your questions um, to uh, you want to take and form your questions to be able to to make sure that you win. Now, if you're um, if you're looking to use the tarot, you know, to be able to decide something for your business or to look at it, you're really the tarot is actually giving you a hint of what the energy is around it. So, um, you know, the, the energy around something is, uh, is what you're doing. So what, are, so some of the questions that I like to ask, you know, like in, other than just a general, like, um, I like to do a five card spread when I do business readings, which is where you are, you know, the next step and where you're heading and then the support from the universe and support from the environment. Um, and so that five card spread is what I call a full spread for a business. And that five card spread will actually give you the energy of where you're at with the next step that you need to take, where you're, you know, where if you take that next step, where you're heading, and then the support that's around you. And so that actually tells you the energy of the environment. And knowing the fact of like doing these readings, you know, like what I say about for readings um, and, you know, is the fact that when you're deciding what the, or looking at the cards and the energy, that's just the energy that's going on right now. That doesn't mean that in the next 10 seconds or you make the next decision that's that's gonna, you know, that it's gonna be, that it's always gonna lead to that conclusion. So using, so taking that's number two here is that like, don't come to conclusion, you know, with your cards. So if you pull a card and say you pull, you know, like the devil for, um, for a transact, you know, for something for about your business, like, and you're like, oh, the devil, what does that mean? And, and you read into it. And the devil is about basically ignoring your awarenesses and just going on to full addiction. So it's like, it's about just being like, I'm going to do it for doing its sake, like pleasure, 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 and doing it only for pleasure. And so um, if you're in a pleasure based business, the devil card could just show that you that that addiction toward you might be going that addiction towards the pleasure. But it could also the devil card also symbolizes sometimes that, you know, that you actually need to have some fun. So um, I pulled the devil card yesterday and it was a reminder that I've been sitting in and doing so much work all the time that like it's time to break out of that pattern of kind of punishment of myself, you know, and in the devil card, you know, they have a woman that has that has a chain around her neck, but it's not super tight around her neck. She could take it off at any moment. And so actually using the cards, you know, even the ones that seem like they'd be scary and say like, what does this have to do with my business? You know, and so you're asking. And so, you know, also when you're doing readings for yourself is that, you know, if you don't get what they're saying, like, then it means you need to change the question. You're not asking the right question for the cards to give you the information, especially if you're really vague, like, oh, what do I need to know? Which is a great question if you're just pulling a card every day. But if you're really clear about like um, about your question of what your actual question is, the clearer you are in your question without making it like, unless you want to do a yes, no reading, um, the clearer you are in your question, the more the spirit can actually come through and tell you exactly what you need. Okay, so that's number one. So getting getting clear, asking the right questions and asking, it's not about like, oh, I need to always find the right questions, but like sometimes, you know, asking the question of what do I need to know um, will lead you to like, okay, can you tell me something deeper? If I took this chance, what, what would happen here? If I didn't do it, you know, what could I have? One of Some of the same things that you do as a business person, um, the kind of stuff that the questions that you ask when you're in um, like your exploratories or your discovery sessions, where you ask people like, what's the cost? You know, uh, what would what would happen if I didn't take this opportunity? What would happen if I did take it? Like those type of questions that you use in your exploratory are perfect questions to ask your tarot, your tarot cards and see what kind of messages come up. 
it's like you're doing your own discovery session from yourself okay all right so that's okay all right I had to pause there for a moment so it must be some tea time okay so next thing for your business number two um, is doing doing a reading of enough cards that will give you the information um, but not overwhelming yourself sometimes just a single card reading of just what do I need to know right now will be enough to be able to spark your business into the next step next step next step because that's what we're doing is we are following you know when when you're really living from you know my point of view is when you're living from the inside out you're really making choices in every moment and yes you're planning for the future but you're not um, you're not actually like looking to project out 30 steps because what happens if tomorrow something amazing happens? Are you going to be like, no, I had, I was going over here. I was going over here. I'm not going to go, you know, and then you become resistant to the energy that's up. So, so my suggestion for business readers is that like, you know, if you're doing this for your business, do a card, you know, especially if you're in a major time of transition, do a card every day. What do I need to know about my business right now? You know, and it's like, allow it to fuel you so you can make the right choices. You know, yes, you could do a 10 card reading and find out the thing from the future and everything that, you know, where you're heading. But like a lot of the times, Tarot's not that, um, well, it's not that, uh, I was about to say something, but Tarot is not that fast. Like most of the time when you do, say you do a big reading of like 10 cards, um, that's a, that usually lasts, it, it comes to fruition within the next one to two years. You know, and that's, so it's like when you're doing a full spread, I love doing full spreads at least once a year, especially around people's birthdays. It's amazing to be able to do like a full spread for their business, a full spread for their life, you know, and just really see, um, you know, a 10 card spread to show exactly where they've been at, what their lessons are and everything, like all those little pieces. Um, but that's a lot of information and it might take a couple of years for it to actually really come to fruition. So, um, so my number two step here is don't overwhelm yourself with the cards or trying to bring in a ton of information. So, you know, take a one card or maybe a three card reading. Um, so a, sing a single card will just say, what do I need to know now? Or what do I, you know, where should I move at this moment? It's much more in the present. Um, a three card reading will be about the past, present and future. So like, where was I with my business? Where am I now? And then, um, and, and where am I going to be if I if I take the next step? Uh, Jenny's asking why is so long. You know that's a good question. Um, that's that's the general energy that um, that you can always tell the cards. Like please tell me only in my full reading. Please only tell me in the first you know in the next six months. But it's again trying to like control nature or control you know your amazingness. Like what you choose right now um, is actually going to affect you, and it, and it affects you in a way that um you know i just think about the idea that like once you change something like it just starts to it moves you down a different path and you're making these micro adjustments especially in your business like oh i'm gonna do this oh maybe i'll do that like yesterday i did a uh, a webinar on social media and i didn't really have that many people actually come to my webinar and i realized oh that's because that used to be something i did in the past i've never done webinar on, on that but it was something in the past that i'm trying to bring forth again and so um it doesn't have as much juice behind it because i haven't put my attention on it and so it's like recognizing that um if i continue to put my attention on something it's gonna build energy and so the way that it builds you know like it, you gotta allow it time to be able to build you know and that's the exciting thing about tarot is that like is that yeah you you're seeing kind of seeing the future but you're creating your future you're creating your future by the past you know and it's what well, by the present yeah. sorry see that that was a freudian slip there you're creating your future by the present um and if you are creating your future from the past there um then that's what the tarot can also show you like you're recreating from the past and now it's time to re now it's time to create from your present from your now from who you are right now okay so that's number two don't overwhelm yourself with the amount of cards or the information because it can just add more confusion so do a one card spread maybe a three card you know five card max if like if you know how to be able to do that okay and then 
number three of my tips here to be able to read is um, is you might not be able to read for yourself. Like I'm teaching you how to do this to read for yourself and you might need someone else. And it's not about like that you can't do it and I don't want to, you know, and I've, I want to challenge you to say that if you feel like you can't read to row, get a deck and start reading for yourself. Like your intuition is spot on and it's, um, it's the fact that it comes at a whisper. It's like, do this, do this, you know, and and if you can hear it at the whisper level and start to move, then it won't have to move it in a way that, um, you know, like pain in your body, like, oh, I think I might need to stretch a little bit. It's different than like, oh my gosh, my back just went out. My whole back just went out. And so um, the way that Tarot and, and anything works in general with, when it comes to build, building your intuition is that like hearing it at the whisper, and if you keep pulling the same cards, like if you do decide to pull a card every day for about your business or about anything, um, you're going to start to hear those whispers. You'd be like, man, I'm still draw drawing swords again. Like, what is it about swords? Oh, swords have to do with the mind. Okay, I'm probably overthinking this. So, you know, maybe instead of being in the mind, I need to go for a jog. I need to do something physical. You know, so it's like allowing yourself to be able to have those whispers and knowing that, um, like I said, you know, sometimes you're too close to read. Um, like I know I have a hard time reading for certain people's um, like friends, people that are really close, unless um, if I'm invested in whatever they're going to do. Like I wouldn't choose to do a business reading for someone that I'm in business with, you know, and it's like unless I can feel like I can pull myself out of it. If I'm invested in it in any way, um, then, and I'm going to be disappointed. Like you pull a card, if you pull a card and you go, Oh, that means you were invested in the outcome. And so sometimes allowing someone else to read for you actually will take and make it so much easier for you to be able to do, um, to hear the messages because it's coming from someone else's mouth. And usually like you only hear what you're kind of looking for anyway. <laughs> That's kind of, you know, we're looking a little bit for validation and sometimes we're looking for clarity, but sometimes we're just looking for those pets. And so sometimes, you know, like it's really allowing yourself to um, to take that intuition that you're hearing and have it come out of other people's mouths. Um, and so, I, you know, we talk about the fact that like to follow, to learn how to follow your intuition, which a lot of people want to know how to do that. Um, it's really actually quite simple. You just keep listening, you know, and you look for patterns. You know, and if you keep seeing things over and over again, like they probably have a message for you. And then you just ask, like, what's the message here? You know, why do I always see this? You know, or what's going on? Like, why is, you know, why is this coming up? Just like when I got the message yesterday, do this for, do a business reading today because it's time. And then I get reflection this morning that someone's like, great, I wanted to be able to get a business reading. I'm like, awesome. You might have been projecting into my head, but it doesn't matter. I listened. I listened and that's exactly what we're doing. And so, you know, allowing that, like, um, it's not that you're not in control of your own life or that you're at effect of that. It's just that I hear things, I'm allowing myself to hear things at a whisper um, for certain things, especially around my business. Other things, you know, you have to bash, bash me outside the head. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of dumb on those, <laughs> on certain things, you know, like, and, and, but it's just allowing that, like, okay, I, I accept myself at either, at either, at, both places there that I can listen at a whisper and sometimes I need to be bashed across the head. So, um, so that's what we have there. So that's my reading. So the first one in is, um, let me come back to my little thing. First thing about that is, yeah, the third one on here that we'll, we'll see if we, yeah, I just blanked out there at the moment talking about being bashed in the head here. So the third one is that sometimes you need an outside party to read for you. Um, and knowing that you can continue to have your own intuitions, um, especially if you're going to have an outside party who's not going to come to conclusion, who's going to be like, OK, this is a possibility and, it, and this is an amazing opportunity you know, for you to be able to go forward. And so finding people like myself or anyone else that can that can step back and actually read for you is awesome. And even, you know, it doesn't have to be a professional reader. Find a friend. You know, find a friend that you can just be could trade readings with if you want to do that. It's not about having to um, to have someone, you know, who's professional do this, you know, if you want to be able to do that. But you sometimes have to step away from from being um, from being the expert for just a moment and allow someone else to to handle you and to, to read the energy for you. And then you get to make the choice of what happens. So 
Okay, so that's my those are my tips there for how to read to row for a business. So I'm gonna take some tea and and if you guys um, we're gonna transition now into um, into doing the readings for the people that are that are here. So um, so go ahead. Um, we have Jenny and Ashley and anyone else that popped in while I wasn't paying attention. Um, go ahead and and write down your question that you have for today. And I'm gonna prepare. Hmm. <sighs> okay, so while we're waiting for the questions there, I'm going to clear, clear the cards. So I just clear, I clear the space there and I clear my cards by just blowing on them and with the intention that we're clearing the energy. So we're going to do before, as we're waiting for other people to um, to put their questions in about their business or whatever it is that you guys want to talk about today. We'll talk about other things other than business, but um, I wanted to kind of focus on doing some business too because I just thought it was really um, juicy right now. So I'm going to do a card reading for anyone that is watching this later that wants to know about um, yeah about their business or about their life in general. Um, so we're going to pull this card for okay. All right, so we've got the eight. Okay, the eight of swords reversed is the card. So the eight of swords, so the eights are always, um, even though, you know, like most of the time when you have something that's right side up and which is reversed, um, reversed usually means that there's some sort of resistance to it. Um, and so, excuse me, uh, but an eight is always red. It's red right side up and upside down. Like, so you get kind of both things together. So an eight is never really negative. You know, it just means that sometimes when it's reversed, it means that, uh, that, that you're just less aware of what the energy is around it. Now this card is actually, if you can see it here, um, there's a woman and she's, she is tied to the swords and she's blindfolded. And so, you know, the thing about um, about blindfolds means that, like, you know, with when you can't see anything, you know, it means you're un that you might be a little unaware. Um, and you also, uh, you know, there's an unawareness that's happening right now um, and you can't really see exactly what's going on. But when you're blind, you actually need faith. You know, you need faith to be able to move forward, move forward into that. And so this card is actually showing me that the people that are on the call here and also um, who will be watching later um, are in a place where they need faith to step forward. Now the swords all have to do with the mind. Um, and so, you know, this is where your mind, like again, when I was talking about the, you know, my mind being, um, you know, at, at once a great ally and, and an enemy for me, it's, uh, it's sometimes your mind, you're too smart for your own good. So, so this card, as we pull it reversed here, is that the things are happening right now in your business and in your life, and they're manifesting. Eight is the number of manifesting. So they're manifesting on the, on the mental level um, and manifesting around you, but you can't really see them. So you can't see them and you're not really aware of them right now. And so to be able to actually have them come to fruition, um, you have to take that faith. You have to be willing to move forward with them. Um, and then and allow them to manifest. So they not just manifest, you know, we talk about manifesting, but like allow them to actually actualize. So they are manifest in the world, which manifesting is just bringing it, it's the how, moving it into the world, but actualizing is putting it into the earth. It's putting it here. It's like, it's not only just dreaming about, you know, and feeling the energy of having this amazing business, but it's literally like, seeing the money come into your PayPal account and seeing, you know, those particular things together come into actualization. And so, um, so this card is telling me here that the people on the call, you know, since we drew reverse to are very blind, are blind at the moment. And it's okay not making people blind. Sometimes that unawareness, you're unaware for a reason, because if you were aware of it, you might go spinning off into some other crazy direction. And so, um, so you know, spirit is pretty tricksy like that sometimes. Sometimes it'll let you be, or you'll choose to be unaware of something as to not hit overwhelm, you know, because we don't want anyone hitting overwhelm because then they don't hit, they don't go forward, you know. And someone, I just wanted to share another little piece is the fact that um, I have a friend that told me, you know, what if you're the energy, because I was saying I was feeling overwhelmed. And she said, what if you're the energy of overwhelm? Like, what if that's you, you know, it's because you take in so much information, you, you get so much awareness, so much of everything around you and have that abundance there, you know, like, what if that energy, what if you just expand and she had me expand my energy out, 
expand my energy out. And when I expanded my energy out and got out of here, um, then it's uh, then it was it was so much easier to handle everything that was already coming to me. Okay. Okay, so that's our reading for anyone that's on the call, you know, right now, and also for um, who watches later. So, okay, I'm going to take my questions here that are that are here. So we have Jenny that says, "How can I make sure that my business opportunity is an equal partnership, or is it better to just stay solo?" Okay, awesome. <sighs> okay, so how I do this too is I just call in Jenny's energy to come in a little closer to me. We've already set. I didn't consciously set the container on the call here, but I did set the container when I was setting the space. So I'm just gonna kind of reinforce the space around me. And then we just invite Jenny uh, and her question to come in a little closer. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this is the card that I'm getting for this. Okay. The Harafant reversed is your card, Jenny. Which when it's right side up, you know, this is the energy of basically being the structure, you know, following the rules. This is the, this is the, like the map, the, the high priestess's counterpart. So, which is like, basically this would be like considered the Pope and following all the rules around there. Um, and so what I see here for this is that like that you're pulling it re reversed is that you're not really feeling like you're um, following the rules. And so the idea with, you know, not following the rules right now is I want to tap into you and ask a question of like, um, you know, do you want to follow the rules? Like, does it have to look like you expected it to look, you know? And so, um, and so when I look at this here too, when I, when I flip it around, usually I look at the see that whatever calls first here is, and the thing that calls to me right in the beginning is his, is his crown there. So it's about sovereignty is what I see for you is being able to, uh, to be sovereign in your own choices here. Um, and right at this moment here, if you're talking about, should I stay into business? Um, oh, she said, I got that yesterday. Um, yeah, so the, as not reverse. So the, what I see here is that, you know, staying, so, staying sovereign, you wanna be able, no matter what happens with your business here, you wanna stay sovereign. You wanna stay in charge. Um, and. Uh, and pulling that reversed here, this could be something that would tell you that you, you know, you either need to make a decision of whether or not you're willing to not be in charge, or you need to make a decision of whether or not if you want to stay in charge, um, choose to not go into partnership because partnership is equal. And and what I see here is that there is definitely someone, you know, it could it's you or the other person that wants to be the leader, that wants to be like the Pope energy and have the other person down here you know, with the subjects subjugated. So, so far for me in general, not to like, I don't want to project anything for you for the future, but as what I see for this card here is that, um, is that you have to, you'd have to make a decision if that's what you want. You know, if, if you need to be, if you're the one that wants to stay sovereign and just in what you want, um, you know, right now there's a, there's a leader and a follower energy in that particular partnership where you're talking about, about the equal partnership. Um, and you say, how can I make sure that this business opportunity um, is an equal partnership? It's, it's you're going to have to stay sovereign, you know, and that makes um, and that's also allowing yourself to not have investment and in whether or not you're going to move forward with this person. Um, and also tapping into that investment, too, is that like, um, you know, thinking about a lot of the times when the reason why we're invested in something is we have an emotional connection with that person and we don't want to, you know, like let them down, you know, and I say about that, like, you know, as much as we, as we want to be like good business women following the rules and setting all this stuff up and everything, we still, there's a part of us on the inside that are just like little girls that don't want our friends to be mad at us, you know, and not saying it that we can't have both of them, you know, and so, um, and so knowing in general that like, you know, you might, I would suggest for you too, that if you wanted to do a deeper reading with me or with someone else, you know, we can really look at that energy. Um, and it's because I, I just think about the fact that like, I know you want to be able to, to have an equal partnership, but at the moment I'm seeing, you know, by this card I'm pulling that it, right now it's definitely not equal, you know, it's not equal. And so how you could actually move forward and allow it to become equal is really for you to stay in your sovereignty and not be invested in the outcome. So if you're walking forward with this person 
and they can't seem to ke catch up on the step with you as quick as you can go, you might need to go without it, go alone. You know, and they say that if you, you know, that the old phrase, if the, you know, if you want to go far, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Um, I believe that's that works really well for business. Um, but it also, you're really trying to decide who you're going to go together with and how long you're actually going to walk together. So this person could be um, could be a stepping stone for something larger. Um, you know, and that partnership would would serve you. Uh, and I think about like. Um, I had a partnership with someone a few years ago that I was one of my first business partnerships where we did classes and taught classes together. Um, and I was in that energy of not being at the level she was at. Um, and we had such friction um, because she would expect one thing and I would um, and I would just be like, yeah, whatever. Like it was just like uh, it was a place where we but I, but both of us learned so much. And one of the main things that we learned, too, at least for me, is I learned um, like I can't, I can't do that. I can't just choose someone that I like to work with. Like, even though we had similar, similar, you know, how to say not similar styles. We had, we definitely had different styles, you know, <laughs> we had like, she was a much more um, straight and like forward thinking person and moving forward in that. And I was just like, well, what's going to happen now? How do we show up here? And so, uh, and that can, you know, when two people like that can partner, um, sometimes it can be really frustrating, but it can also be really growth oriented for both people. So again, I'm not saying that you you would uh, you shouldn't go with this partnership, um, but I would just really come at it with a really big open eye and just look at it of like, okay, right now the energy is not you know I'm being called to stay in my sovereignty, um, and there's a leader and a follower, and do I want that energy in my business? Um, or do I want to be able to um, to have an equal partnership? And what would it take to have this become an equal partnership? So allowing yourself to ask those questions of yourself and of your business, maybe even do some journaling, and then taking the tarot and just pulling up those cards. Like, what would it look like if I chose to be in business with this person? What would it look like if it doesn't? If I choose not to be with him, you know? And what? How would I? How can I stay in my sovereignty? What kind of support do I need to feel in my sovereignty? And do I want more for that person than they want from themselves? Okay, so that's I know it's a lot of information there, Jenny, but um, you didn't put in the comments if there's any other questions you have. And I'll just move to Ashley there. So, all right, I right, clear that. All right, so we, we release energy, Jenny's energy back to her. There you go. Yeah, knowing I'm available if you need to, if you want some follow up here. And we'll call Ashley's energy forward here. Okay. So for Ashley, she says, I feel like I'm putting a bunch of energy and time into my business. And I feel frustrated about how slow my progress feels. It's the image of a mouse running and the wheel comes. What do I need to move? What do I need to know to move forward with more confidence? Okay. And then she wrote, I kind of answer her question with that eight of swords. Yeah, a little bit. Because, you know, we're all connected. And that's the way it happens. <laughs> I am fast, though. That's one thing that, um, you know, I told, I said yesterday on my webinar that I'm kind of the, uh, I'm like the human version of Twitter. You know, if you, if you didn't, if you haven't met anyone before that's like the human version of Twitter, that's me. I watch trends. I move really fast. You like, you just got to keep on it. And so, uh, but I also move fairly slow. Like, I'm slow to change on certain things. But I am kind of the human version of Twitter. So I might have answered your question before, before you even asked it. So, <laughs> That's okay. We can just dive in deeper here. So what, let's see, what do I need to know to move forward with more confidence? Okay. So let's ask her question there. Okay. So this is the card for Ashley. Okay. Wheel of Fortune reversed. All right. So Ashley, your question here about the Wheel of Fortune, or your question around what can I do to move forward with more confidence here. Um, when, you're pull, when you pull the Wheel of Fortune right side up, um, that's about really you're in the right timing and that you're moving along with the cycles and everything um, is exactly where it needs to be and it's all manifesting quickly, okay? When it's pulled reverse, that means you're resisting cycles. You're resisting the fact that it takes a while 
to be able to, to do these things. And I see in general, you said, I have an image of a mouse running in the wheel. There's your wheel right there. You're running in the wheel of fortune here, which is not a bad place to run because when it's right side up, this is like, this is manifesting everything that you've ever wanted, you know? And so it's a great card to be able to get. The only, the only thing here is that you're resisting it, which is, um, it's the idea that like, you're not seeing enough payoff for the, um, for the things that you're doing for your business as fat, yeah, rat on the wheel of fortune. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and the idea about that is that like, you know, you're not seeing payoff fast enough because you're not choosing to do things that actually have immediate payoff. Like you're building a foundation right now. And so that foundation sometimes can be like that card. We say you're blind to it. You're blind to what you're building, you know, and like, and when it comes to having the things like the workshops and all these other things and building your online course or building everything that you're building, it's all like sub submarine level, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not right on the surface. And so, um, so what I want to suggest for you about like, what do I need to know about moving forward with more confidence? Like you're, you know, that everything is under, it's working underneath the water. You're just working and you're just not seeing the immediate feedback. Um, and so my suggestion for you for this is to, um, is to actually start doing something that has immediate feedback. Uh, which is, you know, doing something like this, doing a webinar where you have real live people that you're going to interact with, you know, if that feels good for you or something where you go and, you know, have something that you can have some immediate feedback on, which is even if you say, hey, I'm going to do a, you know, coaching session or do something um, after this coaching session, can you give me like five minutes of feedback of what happened best for you? Um, and then just to really allow the person to give you exactly, you know, you got to ask for exactly what you want. So if you want more feedback or if you want more, like I said, the pets, like when Jenny said, I look pretty, I'm like, yay, I like being pet like that. And sometimes I just have to ask people like, can you just pet me here? Like, you know, and that's the way I call it. But can you give me approval and acceptance of exactly what that? Because we get to the point where we start looking for the criticism and what, how it can always be made better. And then you keep thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never good enough because um, I'm always getting critiques. I'm asking for, because you ask people, you know, you might be asking them, oh, can you give me feedback on my flyer? Or can you give me feedback on my course? Um, and that kind of stuff is like, you're actually asking for a critique. You're asking for somebody to tell you what is wrong with it. And I want to say that the way that to be able to start feeling more confident is ask people like, what's right about this, you know, and then asking yourself too, what's right about this. And, you know, allowing people to actually tell you about the awesomeness that they see. And yeah, it's not about like, Oh, I'm, I'm awesome. Never, you know, I don't want to change. Don't, don't give me any feedback. Um, it literally is allowing yourself to start feeling the confidence um, because of those little tiny pieces and allowing them to be small. Like my whole thing, you know, like I have a webinar and sometimes I just have to be like, hey, I did a webinar and not very many people showed up, but I had a good time. Like that to me shows that like I showed up, number one, you know, like somebody showed up, you know, even if it was, you know, for five minutes, someone showed up um, and you know, and I did it. I, I completed something. And it was like, I allow that, those little three points to be my victory, you know, and that allows me to have confidence to do it again, to schedule it again. You know, like my thing was setting up these webinars for like, I think I'm only going to have to do seven weeks, but um, I was originally going to do it for eight weeks was literally so that every Tuesday at 10 AM, like I have to be dressed. I have to be doing something. I have to be able to get on the camera, you know? And so, and, you know, and there's been some challenges and some resistance to doing that sometimes of not like I don't want to be here, but it was also, um, I do want to be here. And it requires me to show up in a way that if I didn't choose to make this opportunity for myself, you know, um, then I, and, and to be able to get that feedback, then like, it's me making a choice for me. And so, that's, you know, what I see for this card here for you, Jenny is, I'm sorry, uh, Ashley is the fact that like, um, to be able to have the confidence to move forward is to, you literally have to make your set yourself up to win, which is allow yourself to have, you're trying to get the big win, which is like, I will have a successful business. And I will have, you know, clients and people who want to pay me, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars. And like, that's the big win. 
you know, and it's not that it's out of your reach. Of course, it's it's totally right within your grasp. You know, you wouldn't have pulled the Wheel of Fortune, even though you pulled it reverse. You wouldn't have pulled it if you weren't already on that path. Um, but it takes time. It just takes time. And so the confidence comes for setting yourself up to win, setting yourself up to win at these different levels, which setting yourself up to win is literally like um, making small things that you can win at. You know, even if all you did, you know, like I said, is to put a flyer out or like and just keep celebrating those little small successes um, and then allow yourself to actually feel the confidence that comes in those. Like the first time I did, I just want to share that, like the first time I did a webinar, you know, I was just like, yeah, fuck yeah, woo, I did one. I didn't care if it, no one went to it or whatever happened. It was just like, I got on there and did it. And so to me, that was a win. Um, and then that built more confidence into doing more wins and coming out there, you know, and, and like, and it just, the way to build confidence is really to set yourself up with these little tiny successes. Here and allow them those tiny successes to be able to, you know, to turn into something bigger. But also knowing that, like, as you do that, we talked about last time with you, we talked about um, that boat going from choppy waters to smooth waters. It's tiny little adjustments on your boat so that you can head in the direction you want to go. Um, but it's not like you're on the long haul, you know, on that thing, you're on the long haul. And so um, sometimes you just need a little, you know, just a tiny little break of like, oh, here's a little soft place to land for a moment. And then here's another little soft place to land and just allowing yourself to have success so that the haul doesn't feel like it, like you're going forever and no, not getting any, re, you know, return on it. So, so setting yourself up with, you know, little successes and allowing yourself to celebrate. Um, and it, and I know sometimes in the beginning it can be like, oh, you're celebrating something so little. I'm like, no, the fact that I gone on this webinar and I'm dressed, you know, I'm like, woo, you know, like that's it, that's all you got, you know. <laughs> so so allowing yourself in the beginning to just have the successes, like, yes, I wrote this for my course, or oh my gosh, I made this flyer for my workshop. You know, or I had this client and they gave me feedback for five minutes about how amazing I was and it felt so good. And just allowing yourself to have these small successes, knowing that those little tiny small successes will actually add up to your big success. Okay, awesome. So if you have anything else that you want to um, put in the, the chat screen, uh, I will be happy to answer it. Um, and I don't know if there's anybody, it seems like there was for a moment there was somebody else on, but it looks like we just have Ashley and Jenny. So, well, I'm going to go ahead. Um, I've only got a couple more minutes left on the call. So I'm going to go ahead and just close the space here and send, we send Ashley's energy back. <sighs> and I send you both like lots of juice and love and to anyone else that's watching this later, you know, we just send all kinds of love knowing that we already have everything that we need to be successful. Um, and one of the things that I saw and heard recently was somebody said that if you can see it, um, you already have the resources to, to make it happen. And I just thought, wow, is that, cause I, that I always think, oh, if I can see it, then I'm visioning off in the future and I'm in some other land. It's not true. It means that I have all the resources. Um, it's whether or not it's right now is the time, you know, right now is right now the time to do it. Or is it just in a little bit, or is it a year from now or two years from now? I know the things I'm doing right now are feeding my business in a way that like that have never been fed before. And so allowing that, that's some small successes and it adds up really well. So so I just wanted to make some, now we have the, that's my final words there. And so I wanna make my quick offer to you guys um, and I'll put it up here if I can select it. Okay, load. Okay, so I display my offer. So my offer here is for a full business tarot reading. And so that's, a you know, and it's $120 that I have, and I call it a business clarity session. Um, and this is actually about the idea of um, going deeper and looking at the exact energy of like where you're at right now, what the next step is and where we're going. Um, and we also take during this business reading and talk about, you know, not only just the energy of it, but like the real action steps of where you need to go with this and what kind of stuff do you need to do? I mean, the, the fact that, 
you know, I take all of my skills together when I do these readings of like, I don't shut off my coach and I don't shut off my social networking person and I don't shut off, you know, my intuitive self I or my artists. I don't shut any of them off. I bring them all together and actually do the reading from there because every one of the pieces and parts of me is a gift. And so, you know, what I offer with these readings here is an hour long um, experience of being able to figure out what the right next step is for your business and where to put your attention and where you need, you know, more and where you need less. And so it's like, we answer any questions that you have and we just really lay out something for you that is personalized. Um, and I do the readings, you know, either by phone or by, you know, by the internet. Um, and I know the moment that I sat down with someone recently and did a reading with them, um, I just, I told them, I was like, okay, I just want to tell you um, right now I can feel you. And I just want to tell you, you're not wrong. And she burst into tears and I'm like, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like that moment of like feeling that energy that she was going to use this reading to beat herself up. And I want to, you know, offer the fact that like that, you know, tarot and all these other ways that you can do for divination can can help you with your business. But if you're going to make yourself wrong and beat yourself up over it, you're going to need an outside party to be able to say you're not wrong. And here's what I see. And then you get to be as the beautiful businesswoman that you are, you get to move forward. So so my offer there is um, you guys can click on the link if you're interested in it. Um, and so I would love to be able to go deeper um, with anyone that's ready to do that. And we just look and see what's going on with your business um, and allow it to do that. Right now, my rates are super low um, and I'm getting the the hit that I need to make them a little higher uh, because I know the person, you know, one of the tarot readers that, that I work with, she charges $450 for this type of reading. And so uh, I know my rates are low at this moment and it's also like, I love it. I'm ready to do more of this kind of work with people. And so I make the offer at this rate so that um, I can get to play more. So it's really actually for me to be able to be like, okay, do you want it? Do you want it? So, so that's my offer to you guys. So if you want to do a reading um, with me, then go ahead and click on the link and you, or you can send me an email later. And, um, and yeah, I would love to work with you more. So, so and if anybody has any other questions or anything that you guys want to talk about for the last couple of minutes, I'm open here to take any, any last minute questions. So, okay. all right. Okay, doesn't look like there's any last questions. So thank you all for showing up and I hope you have just a beautiful day. Thank you so much for all that you're giving to the world because I can feel what an amazing effect you guys are having on the world, you know, just by being you. And that's the joy of all of this is that like, what if us just being who we are and doing what we're really good at is actually moving the forward, the, the life and the living that we want forward and changing the world in such an easy, easy way. So I just offer that to you because I, I can feel your potency on that. Oh, Jenny asked me the thing. Um, the reading is about an hour. I'll go a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, depending on we just tap, do tap into the energy. But it's about an hour long reading. Um, and just everything you want to talk about, we talk about in that, you know, and get that reading. Um, most people, that hour after an hour, they're about fried. So <laughs> I don't like to go any further than an hour. Um, so, but yeah, it's an hour long reading. So. So yes, so thank you all for your for being who you are in the world and I look forward to um, to chatting with you more. Okay, see you guys next week. Bye.